tonight. There's a lot of controversy over this one. This really is the end of an era. Blockbuster will close all of its remaining stores. It is a sign of the time. The movie gallery hit the stop button for good. Hollywood Video is closing nearly all of its metro area stores. Absolutely no one under 17 will be admitted. Hello, welcome back to Atomic Video and another episode of VCR Horrors. My name is Wade, I'm your video store clerk, and tonight we are tackling an awesome, what I'd call gateway horror movie. Uh, perfect for families, perfect for kids, kind of the goonies of horror movies. Uh, we're talking about Fred Decker's 1987 underrated gem, The Monster Squad. The Monster Squad follows a group of misfit kids devoted to horror movies and monsters who call themselves The Monster Squad. Now, I'm sure both of you know a great deal about monsters, but that's not the issue here. The issue is science is real. Monsters are not. We don't know that, sir. But soon the squad gets more than they bargained for when the sinister Count Dracula arrives in their small town searching for a powerful amulet. Dracula brings with him a squad of his own, much to the dismay of the kids and the Universal Studios legal team, Frankenstein's monster, the Wolfman, the Mummy, and the Twinkie-loving creature from the Black Lagoon are soon on the case. Thanks a lot, Pete. Okay, remember, rendezvous position A, 2200 hours. What? 10 o'clock, doofus. How do we know the animals are there anyway? We don't, Shut but it's all we have to go on. Okay. Well, good luck, butt love. I Shut know you are, but what am I? Out. What, Eugene? Creature stole my Twinkie. Suddenly, the Monster Squad and local teenage bad boy Rudy find that they are the only ones who stand in the way of total monster world domination. You guys! Oh shit! Where you going, Rudy? I'm in the goddamn club, aren't I? Come and get it. The Monster Squad came out in the summer of 1987. And no one cared. Well, I cared. I was there opening weekend, uh, but I was probably one of the only people in the theater at that point. Thanks to a VHS release and endless cable and, and TV screenings, the film gained a massive cult following over the years. I mean, it's taken more than 30 years, but the film has finally found a real audience. Hey, fat kid. Good job. My name is Horace. So the movie theater that I saw this at was actually really cool because when you would come out into the main lobby area, right next door, adjacent to the theater, was a huge video arcade. Now, this was pretty late in arcades' lifespans. A lot of them were dying by this point. This one was still huge and it was going strong. And so after the movie, you could go in, you could ride your bikes to the movie theater, lock up, go see a movie, jump back on your bikes, hit 7-Eleven for a Slurpee on the way home, and you have an awesome summer day. And that's the thing that I think a lot of kids today don't have. You know who to call when you have ghosts. But who do you call when you have monsters? We're the Monster Squad. What's a squad? It's like my only vice, I think. They're young and inexperienced. Naughty virgin! They're a bit disorganized. Monsters are not real. We don't know that, sir. 2,000-year-old dead guys do not get up and walk away by themselves! But when strange things start happening in town... There's a monster in my closet. Whoa! Look at that big, scary monster! What's happening? Do I have a werewolf? Silver bullet? They're the only ones ready to do battle. Looking down there is killing people. And if it's monsters, nobody's gonna do a thing about it but us. Soon the creatures of the night show the world. Oh, 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 oh. Real monsters? Oh. Us? Midnight in the world, remember? Maybe we can be like... 
So all of the movie monsters that you see in here were totally reimagined by Stan Winston and his effects team. Uh, they had to skirt all the legal issues because the most iconic uh, visualized versions of these monsters belong to the Universal Monsters. So it's really hard to go ahead and you know, use these characters without infringing on Universal's copyrights and, and likenesses. The film was substantially re-edited in post-production to the point where there are now roughly 13 minutes cut from the final film because... Well, the studio executives have got to earn a paycheck by bitching about something. Uh, apparently their biggest complaint with the movie that it couldn't be longer than 90 minutes, so they had to chop it way down for release. Uh, apparently the, the same studio executives that wanted 13 minutes cut out of the movie uh, were also extremely uncomfortable with scary German guy's backstory about being a concentration camp Holocaust survivor. Um, you know, I'm glad they left that in because if they had cut that out, that that's an especially kind of powerful moment he shuts the door and, and he's got the his 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 concentration camp number you know tattooed on his wrist thank you very much Bye. Thank, thank you, you very much, much. Yeah. for all your time Ooh. thank you i expect you boys thought i was some kind of monster myself hmm? a vampire perhaps that's quite all right but i am not you know if i were a vampire then i wouldn't have a reflection Now, would I? Man, you should know a lot about monsters. Now that you mention it, I suppose I do. Even as a kid, I understood what that was because, well, you know, I'm, I'm a history kid, but um, it that shit had power. That was a great moment, and if they had cut that out, that would have completely gutted uh, the, the character and, and kind of the impact of the whole thing because it's got, you know, you've got this old guy helping this little girl face down this ultimate evil, you know, and he's coming face to face with this, you know, sinister, like, evil force again in his life, you know, during his lifetime. A lot of people really complain that this was a ripoff of the Goonies. Uh, I don't recall the creature from the Black Lagoon or Frankenstein being in Goonies, but if you want to draw comparisons to kids on a, you know, supernatural adventure, Summer movie? Okay, sure, I'll bite. So here's a fun little cross, uh, a little cross episode uh, trivia. Uh, this will reappear, of course, in the Night of the Creeps episode. Um, but in Night of the Creeps, at one point, there's a lot of graffiti scribbled on a bathroom wall, and one of the things written there is "Go Monster Squad." Uh, one of Fred Decker's little nods to uh, to the Monster Squad movie being made. Another piece of cross-episode trivia that we're going to cover here is take a look at this scene with the detectives talking about the mummy and then pay attention again when we, what do, when we eventually cover Night of the Creeps. you telling me there was this 2,000-year-old mummy here, right? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. But now he's not here. He's gone. Vanished. History. Just... And you're saying you didn't hear anybody come in here or leave. Is that right? Can you hear me now? Hello? I can hear you fine. So nobody took the mummy? I would have heard them. Of course he would have. Stupid question. Did you take him? No, sir. Just a shot. That's it, Bill. This case is too hard, man. Let's be firemen instead. I'm glad you're getting major laughs out of this, Rich. The problem is, 2,000-year-old dead guys do not get up and walk away by themselves. During filming, um, the actors who played Dracula and Frankenstein's monster would actually never break character when the kids were nearby. They were never seen by the kids without makeup, and the kids in the film only knew them as actually the creatures they were playing and not as the actors behind the makeup. Which I thought from a filmmaking standpoint was actually really cool because it really invests the, the, the kids in the, in the world that they're playing in, and it really reinforces the idea that, you know, the monsters are real. Um, 
especially to like the the little the little girl who plays Phoebe and and uh, you know that it's just I think it's a really cool way to do it. It's not like super method acting, but I did love the fact that they they had enough concern for the the performances from the kids that it they felt it suited them to stay in character. So I thought that was kind of a nice touch by both the you know the the cast and crew. Um, you know, nice cool little thing. So the kids could always go play in this world. So when they were filming the movie, the, you know, the kids got to go play with Frankenstein's monster. So that's, I thought that was kind of a neat way to film the movie. One of my absolute favorite scenes in this movie is when Sean's dad absolutely forbids him uh, from going off to see this, the new horror movie. Because, you know, if he doesn't see it, all of his friends are gonna know all the best kills and stuff by the weekend. Well, Dad, uh, some of the guys and me were maybe gonna go see Groundhog Day Part 12 tonight. Only if it's okay with you. Is it, please? Oh, we got a problem. No way! Yes way! I go out with your mother tonight. You got a certain five-year-old sister and these babies. Oh, come on, Dad, I'm waiting all year to see this movie! Easy, pal, it's only a movie. Tomorrow night, you and I will go see Groundhog Day. I'll get him early. Tomorrow night? That'll be too late. The guys will blab the entire plot. Plot? Did I hear plot? Sean, it is a guy with an axe. Anyway, I thought they killed him in the last one. They did. And he returns from his grave. He returns from the grave? Sean, he always returns from the grave. If they blew him up, put his head in a blender, and mailed the rest of the pieces to Norway, he would still return from the grave. That was part seven. You want to know what the plot is? plot to separate you from my five bucks. I want to see a stupid movie. Back in the day when all the horror movies were coming out, every couple of months you would have a new horror movie hitting theaters. You would come out on Friday and you would go to school on Monday and everyone had seen it but you. Or if you had seen it, you were the one doing this and being an asshole. But man, you would be talking about, oh my God, when he just, when Jason like smashes the chick with the sleeping bag or, you know, when, when uh, you know, somebody gets the chainsaw through the nutsack. That is so freaking true. And you would go to school on Monday and everyone would ruin these movies for you. I also loved the resolution of that though, where he sneaks out of his upstairs room to sit on the roof and watch, you know, the movie from the drive-in with binoculars. I, A, I love the idea that this drive-in is kind of behind his house. <laughs> And that his dad can come up, knows where he is, and that he can come up, sit out on the roof with him, bring him a cheeseburger, and watch this movie. I love that. I love that whole father-son bonding moment. That's such a great scene in this movie. Uh, if this video has made you want to find a video store to rent a movie, by all means, check us out on AtomicVideoStore.com or VCRHorrors.com. We're on all the major social media platforms. When you do visit AtomicVideoStore.com, remember the video store may be fictional and created for the movie Friday Night Frights. However, uh, if you do fill out the online membership form, you will get a very real Atomic Video membership card in the mail. Uh, so don't forget to do that. It'll entitle you to be entered in the contest, uh, all kinds of online exclusives, and it'll keep you up to date on the making of Friday Night Frights. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and shut the store down. Until next time, everybody, uh, remember your tape is due back by midnight, and be kind, rewind. We're the Monster Squad. <laughs>
kid, video games looked like this. Okay, so sometimes they looked like this. As years went on, games got better. Sure, I got a job, started a career, built a life. I started making movies and TV. Well, got pretty good at it. Even won some awards. No matter what happened, I never stopped playing. So why do I still play? Why do I stream video games? Because I am a gamer. I don't want to live just one life. I want to live many. Yeah.